Not too long ago, the entry-level luxury car battle was fought between the Mercedes C-Class, the Audi A4 and the BMW 3 Series. But the game has moved on a fair bit and these are no longer your entry points into their respective manufacturers. These are instead breadwinners and image enhancers in equal measure. And that's exactly why they need to be very on point when it comes to changes and updates. And that's exactly what the 3 Series has been subjected to. Hello and welcome to Pitch Stop. We start this episode with the new 3 Series, which is not exactly new. It is a result of a process that BMW calls LCI or Life Cycle Impulse. In simple terms, it's a midlife update given to a product platform which has been getting on in age a bit. And this one is about 5 years in the run. The 7th generation 3 series which is this G20 platform was launched in 2018 and since then it has been given a few nips here and a few tucks there but this is a big update. Despite the fact that the 3 series is now going to be offered only with the M Sport clothing package there is not much by the way of exterior design to flaunt this car as a major update but you will notice some changes of course for example the bumpers, they are more defined and there are some subtle changes given to the headlamps as well. And as you move towards the rear, there are some subtle changes in the back as well, but that's about it. It's not really the design details that you will notice instantly about this facelift. It is how long this car seems to sit on the road. That's because the 3 Series has grown in size, the overall length has gone up of course, and the wheelbase has gained 110 millimeters. BMW calls this facelift as the Grand Limousine, but even with that 110 millimeters of additional wheelbase and the overall improvement in the cabin space, calling it a limo is definitely a stretch and BMW is definitely being a little optimistic here. Has it got reasonable space? Absolutely, there is no doubt about it. But so do several other cars in segments lower to this one. The tag of Grand Limo is good for a 7 Series and this is not a 7 Series. But now that I've ranted enough about its misplaced Grand Limousine title front, Let's get to the basics of this cabin. To start with the seats, they're okay. BMW has mostly done fantastic seats in the past. So these irk me just a little pinch. The architecture of the seats is absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that. And uh, they also feel the right size. But the seat back is a little flat and that's the disappointment that I have. But the space in the front is ample. And even the passengers in the rear are never going to complain about their knees hitting the hard plastic seat back. So all that is great and the space is fantastic. Speaking of the rear, I'm not a big fan of the centrally placed floor mounted aircon vents for the rear passengers. I've never been and I don't think I ever will be. <laughs> I think all the manufacturers that are rolling out cars with rear air vents uh, placed like this should just stop. The B-pillar or the roof-mounted vents are so much better at doing the job of cooling. Anyway, enough about all this. Now let's dig into the biggest change that the updated 3 Series comes with, which is its screen. There's a huge glass panel that runs almost off the center of the dashboard and it really heightens the experience of the cabin in here. In terms of features, well, it's 2023, so you can't really get away with features that belonged in 2010s, right? And uh, BMW has thrown in every feature that you can imagine, and then some. Connectivity, well, the entire suite of functions is available to you, and uh, there's wireless access to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. There is inbuilt navigation as well, and a digital key that lets you control certain functions of the car from a phone app. That's not all, there is also a reversing assistant that remembers the last 50 meters that you drove and can back you up along the same exact path. 
Something that I really appreciate this three series for is the practicality quotient, and it should make long distances pretty easy because of the versatility of the cabin. There is a reasonable amount of room for you to store a lot of things. But now on to how this thing drives. Because the moniker of 330 used to mean the car came with a straight six engine, making enjoyable amounts of power. But what impressed the most was its refinement when going very normally at sedate speeds, and eagerness to make its lungs heard when you pressed hard. But this 330 is nothing like that. This does not have a straight six engine. This one has a two-liter inline four that makes about. 258 horses and 400 newton meters, which start to work from as low as 1500 rpm. While it may not be as characterful or as polished as a straight six, it is not mediocre in any way. The power is quite plenty, to be honest. It's delivered very neatly across a seemingly good mid-range, and uh, it continues to perform more than adequately. But you have this sense in your head, and uh, it lingers as a notion from the past that 330s were lovelier, and that is what spoils the game a little bit. Really, though, this engine is absolutely fine, and the eight-speed automatic feels it's working with the breadth of the engine in the most intuitive manner. And then is the ride and handling balance. See, BMW has always aced this tricky bit by tilting the scale towards handling ever so lightly, and that's wonderful. We have all come to love the brand for exactly that. The three series has always been dynamically a very well sorted car, and despite the heft added into this one because of the length, this works effortlessly at feeling fluid and composed. But I think the highlight of this car is not the handling, which is very, very strange, because for a BMW, we've always said it's the handling that really makes you smile. But in this one, I think it's the ride. It feels plush without feeling mushy. It feels just the right level of soft, and uh, sadly, that does have a little bit of an effect on handling. It's not sharp as if it's going to cut the grass blades along the side of the roads, but it will definitely be deft enough around a bend. So you can surely enjoy it, and with the suspension in comfort setting, you will even feel the load shift, which just adds to the emotion at the theater. As is the norm in the industry, this car comes with different driving modes, and the sporty driving mode well, that just alters the damping a little bit. It changes the pokiness of the engine and the urgency of the gearbox, but it's not as big a dynamic shift that you would like to take this car to the track and whack out a stunning lap time. For that, you would want the 340i or the full-on proper M job, which is the M3 or the M4. On its own, the three grand limousine is one hell of a product in the luxury segment. And while it may not have the specialness of the Mercedes C-Class cabin experience, it's really not bad, and it really does very strongly on comfort. So, if you want a Mercedes at around 60 to 65 lakh Indian rupees, and also want it to be a little bit of fun, the three series might just cut the mustard. Thank you.